Good afternoon. Welcome to our worship today, where in the mirror of the passion, we will see that all the roads lead to the cross. Let's stand up and we'll sing our opening hymn together, number 547. The Order of Matins, page 219. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship Him. 
Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hands. The strength of the hills is his also. Thus he is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever. Amen. Blessed be God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. O oh, come, let us worship Him. Our psalm is Psalm 36 in the front part of your hymnal. We read it responsively by verse. Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes that his iniquity cannot be found out and hated. The words of his mouth are trouble and deceit. He has ceased to act wisely and do good. He plots trouble while on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not reject evil. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O Lord. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the rivers of your delight. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we see light. Oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you. And your righteousness to the upright of heart. Let not the foot of arrogance come upon me. Nor the hand of the wicked drive me away. There the evildoers lie fallen. They are thrust down, unable to rise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You may be seated for the office hymn.
first reading this afternoon from Lamentations chapter 2. How the Lord in his anger has set the daughter of Zion under a cloud. He has cast down from heaven to earth the splendor of Israel. He has not remembered his footstool in the day of his anger. The Lord has swallowed up without mercy all the habitations of Jacob. In his wrath, he has broken down the strongholds of the daughter of Judah. He has brought down to the ground in dishonor the kingdom and its ruler. He has cut down in fierce anger all the might of Israel. He has withdrawn from them his right hand in the face of the enemy. He has burned like a flaming fire in Jacob, consuming all around. He has bent his bow like an enemy, with his right hand set like a foe. And he has killed all who were delightful in our eyes. In the tent of the daughter of Zion, he has poured out his fury like fire. The Lord has become like an enemy. He has swallowed up Israel. He has swallowed up all its palaces. He has laid in ruins its strongholds. And he has multiplied in the daughter of Judah, mourning and lamentation. O oh Lord, have mercy on us. The second reading from James chapter 4. What causes quarrels and what causes fights among you? Is it not this, that your passions are at war within you? You desire and you do not have, so you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passion. You adulterous people, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose it says to no purpose that the scripture says, he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. O Lord, have mercy on us. And then from Luke chapter 23. There followed Jesus a great multitude of the people and of women who were mourning and lamenting for him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? O oh Lord, have mercy on us. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is put away. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. We have an advocate with the Father. Jesus is the propitiation for our sins. He was delivered up to death. He was delivered for the sins of the people. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.
So today in our journey through Lent, as we once again look in the mirror of the Passion, we are on the Via Dolorosa, that is the way of suffering or the way of pain. And that way led Jesus from the fortress of Antonia where he had appeared before Pilate through the city and outside the city of Jerusalem to Golgotha where he was crucified. Already before Pilate, we have heard the governor say, I find no guilt in him. Whether they claim that he's a king, Pilate sees nothing in Jesus that is worthy of death. And yet the voices of the crowd prevail. And Pilate releases Barabbas and he delivers Jesus over to be crucified. The Roman historian Plutarch tells us that criminals sentenced to crucifixion carried their own crosses outside the city to the place of their crucifixion. But Luke says that as they were leading Jesus away, they found somebody named Simon of Cyrene. He's just coming in from the country and they made him carry the cross of Jesus to Golgotha. So after that, there's this whole crowd of people following Jesus. A great multitude of the people and women, all who are mourning and lamenting for him. That's the mirror we're looking into today, the mourning and lamenting of the people. Suddenly, all those cries of Hosanna, all those cries of victory and, and a new king have given way to tears of mourning and lamenting. But then Jesus turns to them and says something very interesting. He says, daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the days are coming when they will say, blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountain, fall on us and to the hills, cover us. Jesus says, don't cry for me. Weep for yourselves because terrible things are going to happen. Jesus had mentioned this before when he had talked about the end times. He told them that things were going to get worse and worse. And now he says the days are coming when you're going to wish you didn't have any children to take care of. And we've all got those images in our minds of over 10 million refugees leaving the Ukraine. And they've got whatever they can hold in a couple of tote bags and so many have children in tow or a baby in their arms. This is the kind of scene that, that Jesus wants them to picture. It's so hard when you have to take your family and run for your life. Look for a place to hide. Remember the words of Psalm 121? My eyes look to the hills. Where will my help come from? Some place to hide. Some place to be safe. When Jesus talked about this before, the disciples had asked him, how do we know when the time will come when the temple will be destroyed? And Jesus says, there's going to be a lot of false teaching, false prophecy. There's going to be wars, rumors of wars. There's going to be natural disasters, famine, pestilence, you're going to be persecuted, you're going to be delivered up. And then he says much the same thing about the destruction of Jerusalem. When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, then know that its desolation has come near. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains and let those who are inside the city depart. Let not those who are out in the country enter it, for these are the days of vengeance to fulfill all that is written. Alas, for women who are pregnant, and for those who are nursing infants in those days, there will be great distress upon the earth and wrath against the people. They will fall by the edge of the sword and be led captive among the nations, and Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot by the Gentiles. So Jesus goes from what's happening in the world to what will happen in Jerusalem, and then after this he talks about the coming of the Son of Man. It is exactly the way that the prophets described it. The prophet Micah, who said that Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins. Or the prophet Jeremiah. This is what the Lord of hosts says. 
cut down her trees, cast up a siege mound against Jerusalem. This is the city that must be punished. And later on, he says, I will make this house like Shiloh, desolate and without inhabitant. What is Jesus saying? What does Jesus want them to realize? Yes, they are mourning. They are mourning what's happening to Jesus. They're mourning what is happening to the Christ, their Savior. But there's no connection with their own lives. They're praying at the terrible things that they have done to Jesus, the terrible injustice that has happened, but there's no repentance in their own lives. They don't realize that the judgment that is about to come is because of their sin and their failure and what their lives are like. They're watching Jesus, but they really don't get it. They really don't understand what's coming on here, what's going on here. In James, we're told to mourn and weep and repent, to realize what our sinful condition is. That's what Jeremiah's lamentation called for. He has multiplied in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. What you're looking at as you watch the Christ going through Jerusalem, the Via Dolorosa, is what your sin has brought to this world. You are seeing what you deserve. You are seeing the judgment of God. There were always crowds following Jesus for any number of reasons. They first came following Jesus because they wanted to be healed. Towns of people would come to wherever Jesus was simply to be cured of whatever ailment they had, whatever disease, whatever demon they had. And they were. Crowds of people followed Jesus to be taught by him, to hear his stories, to hear what the kingdom of God was really all about. Crowds of Jesus showed up at the temple every day to hear Jesus teach, to answer all the questions of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes, and to show them that they didn't know as much as they thought they knew. They followed Jesus because they wanted to see God's kingdom come. They were firmly convinced he would be the one to do it. He was the son of David. Hosanna, save us. But look where their journey takes them. As they follow Jesus, they end up at the cross. They end up at Golgotha, where Jesus is nailed to the cross, where he is crucified, and where he dies. We come seeking Jesus, too. Lots of people come seeking Jesus. And we come to him for lots of different reasons. We come to him for mercy because we know he's our great high priest. He's already gone ahead of us into heaven. By his blood, we can come to the throne of grace with confidence. And we always find mercy. He always finds his forgiveness. We come to Jesus for hope because we see the world around us falling apart. We have problems in our own lives that we don't have answers for. But when we come to Jesus, we come for hope. Here's somebody who can help us. We come to Jesus seeking peace. Our, our minds are constantly in turmoil with all the things going on, so many things to worry about, so many fears in this world. But Jesus has promised peace. So we come to him for something that will give us rest. We come to Jesus for rest. He says, if you're weary and burdened, come to me. I'll give you rest. We come to Jesus for life, because without him, we know where our lives will end up. But you know what? Every, no matter what you come to Jesus for, no matter what you follow Jesus for, you always end up at the cross. Every story in the Bible that points to Jesus eventually takes us to where he was crucified. Every parable, every teaching, every miracle eventually takes us to the cross. It's just like the Apostle Paul says. We preach Christ and him crucified. Why is that? Why do we always end up at the cross? 
because that's what Jesus came to do. That's who came, Jesus came to be. He came to be the blameless sacrifice. He came to be the atonement for our sins. He came to be the one who suffered and died for us. When you picture in your mind, when you read in the scriptures, the terrible things that happened to Jesus, do you make the connection? Do you make the connection between what happened to him and your life? Do you make the connection that what you see happened to him, what you know happened to him, was what you deserve? That's what your sin has brought upon you. That's what your sin has brought upon this world. Do you make that connection? You know, Jesus said something very interesting. He said, if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? That's an interesting little, little proverb there, isn't it? When the wood is green, it's good. It's growing. It's alive. When the wood is dead, it's dry. It's lifeless. It's good for nothing but the fire. Jesus is alive, and Jesus is good. And look what they did to him. Look what they did to the innocent son of God. What are you going to think is going to happen to those of us who are dead in our sins and transgressions? What do you think is going to happen to us who are too often the dry branches not bearing the fruit that God's looking for? When things are happening like this, when Jesus is alive, what's going to happen when Jesus is gone and you're on your own? The connection, the connection we need to make is to see what is happening to Jesus is what should happen to us, but doesn't, happens to him. And that should bring us to our knees in repentance. That should make us mourn and lament that this all happened because of us, not because of anybody else. There's nobody else to blame but me and my sin. It's all about our future. What's going to happen in the future? What's going to happen without Jesus? There'd be no hope. There would be nothing. Why do we mourn and lament? There's any number of reasons. There are wars and rumors of wars. Terrible images in our eyes and guesses about what's going to happen next. We mourn and lament because there's lots of illness all around us. People we know are sick, and they are dying. We mourn and lament because so many are hungry in this world. So many don't have water to drink. We mourn and we lament because it's sad. It's sad sometimes as we say goodbye to people we love. They move away, or they move on, or they die. But our reaction should not just be sadness because of what we see going on in the world. Our reaction should always be one of repentance. Mourning and lamenting our sin. Because when we do, when we mourn and lament, when we humble ourselves before God, then he lifts us up. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and he forgives us and he cleanses us from our unrighteousness. When we mourn and lament, it brings us back to the cross. And there at the cross, you see the love of God. That's where you see the undeniable love that our Father had for us, that he would give up his life for us. And lamenting and mourning brings us to new hope each and every day. Because the same Jeremiah who lamented the destruction of Jerusalem also reminded us that in our laments and in our mournings, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul, therefore I will hope in him. If our search for Jesus always takes us to the cross, there will always be new hope in the morning. For after his death, on the third day, there is life. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, there are so many things that bring us to tears, so many things that weigh on our souls, so many things that burden our hearts, so many things that haunt our minds. 
Lord, in our mourning and our lamenting, we come to you in repentance to find your love and to find life. In Jesus' name, amen. We stand for the Deum, page 222. Lord, with our offering.
be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O oh Lord, hear my prayer and let my cry come unto you. Almighty God, you have called your church to witness that in Christ you have reconciled us to yourself. Grant that by your Holy Spirit we may proclaim the good news of your salvation so that all who hear it may receive the gift of your salvation. Lord Jesus Christ, giver and perfecter of our faith, we thank and praise you for continuing among us the preaching of your gospel for our instruction and edification. Send your blessing upon the word which has been spoken to us and by your Holy Spirit increase our saving knowledge of you that day by day we may be strengthened in the divine truth and remain steadfast in your grace. Give us strength to fight the good fight and by faith to overcome all the temptations of Satan, the flesh, and the world so that we may finally receive the salvation of our souls. Faithful God, whose mercies are new to us every morning, we humbly pray that you would look upon us in mercy and renew us by your Holy Spirit. Keep safe our going out and our coming in. And let your blessing remain with us throughout this day. Preserve us in your righteousness. And grant us a portion in that eternal life, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land that we may be a people at peace among ourselves. And a blessing to the other nations of the earth. Grant that we may choose trustworthy leaders contribute to wise decisions for the general welfare, and serve you faithfully in our generation. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. At this noon hour, Lord, we pray for your mercy and healing grace for Luke and Sherry, especially as she recovers from her surgeries, and for Jackie as she grows stronger in the hospital and seeks a place for her care. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.